All right, so let's talk about the worst camera for stock photography. Now, the truth is, quality is not really that important when it comes to photography. Uh, a lot of people don't care if their memory is a little bit of blur or noise or if the photo is not perfect. There's a lot of aspects of photography where quality doesn't matter. If you look at old photographs from sports magazines where Michael Jordan's up in the air and all these guys are playing basketball, there's a lot of noise in the images and that didn't matter. You got the shot, you got the really cool photo dunking the ball like it looked awesome. Noise was just part of the images. But now, when we're talking stock photography, this is one of the most technical genres of photography. And these technical aspects sadly do matter. <laughs> now, there's a camera that's out there and every manufacturer makes them. And to me, they're like the worst thing that was ever invented. They're necessary, but they're hurting a lot more people than they're helping. The entry level camera, something like this, like the Rebel kit lens, uh, with the kit lens, the 18 to 55. These combinations should be banned. They've been popularized by the camera manufacturers. Every manufacturer has the same thing. Sony, Canon, Nikon, they all have their own entry level cameras. They are necessary, why? Because photography is very specific. If you wanna shoot landscapes, you're not gonna buy a telephoto like this. If you wanna shoot sports, you're not gonna buy a wide angle like this. But you need to know what you want before you can get started. And that's why they sell things. That's why they sell things like this with cheap lenses like these that don't really do much, but they give you an idea of what you can do with a camera. But if you're trying to get started in stock photography, like I know a lot of you are, I also know that a lot of you watching this video are on a tight budget. And something like this is the best you can afford, which is fine. If you can start with this, then let me help you understand the limitations of the camera so that you can work around those uh, limits. I bought this for that specific reason. If you follow my channel, you know that I have quite a few videos where I use this as a uh, for photos to upload and submit to stock. Some of the agencies accepted all the photos from this camera, but most of them rejected about 50%, and they said it was because of quality issues. The first thing, let's understand those limitations. These entry level cameras, uh, whether Sony, Nikon, or Canon, or whatever manufacturer, they're terrible in low light. They have ISOs that go all the way up to 12,000 something. Really try not to go past 400. This is gonna limit uh, indoors uh, events and things like that. But the noise because of the sensor, look at the, let me lift this here. Look at the size of that sensor, it is tiny. So they don't handle low light very well and that's because they're built that way. <laughs> Again, they're not made to be able to be an all round great camera they're meant to start. So if you avoid going past ISO 400, you're gonna get cleaner and sharper images that should get accepted. All right, number two, these lenses, the kit lenses. These are very slow focusing and they are terrible when it comes to focusing. Uh, you can feel it, you can hear the motors, you can hear how this one even cracks. Uh, they're not very good when it comes to fast focus or accurate focus. So the best way to use these is by switching your, um, there we go, <laughs> switching your live view on to preview. And then when your screen is on, use a tripod, zoom in on live view and focus the best you can. And then use a timer so you can get the picture without any, any movement. Another thing, these cameras are not very good when we're talking about dynamic range. Uh, dynamic range is when you have a, a bright cloud in the background and a person in the front. You wanna capture both. These cameras are not that great because the person is gonna be in the shadow or the cloud is gonna be way too white and it has no detail. The way around this is to do two pictures, one person of your subject and another picture of the cloud. Change the exposure and then blend them in Lightroom or Photoshop with the exposure uh, blending. Obviously, when you're doing a photo shoot with people, you're not gonna be able to take two photos without them moving. So adding an extra light, adding a flash, something like this will help you get better dynamic range. So you expose for the cloud, the light shines on your subject, and now you have a better image. The other thing is learn how to position your subject. 
This way you're not gonna have that gap between dark and bright and hopefully you can use the light to your advantage. The other thing with these, uh, this type of equipment, like when you look at this lens, this is a 55 to 250. It's supposed to be a telephoto lens, which it is fine. And it has a built-in image stabilizer and autofocus and all that thing. The focus is the same. The camera has a very hard time because of the dynamic range and the speed of the lens. This lens is, uh, it has an aperture of four to five, six. So it's a smaller aperture that lets less light into the camera, which makes it harder to focus. That's why professional lenses are much more expensive. They have apertures of uh, 2.8 or, or, or larger. This lets a lot more light in, making the camera find focus faster. Something like this, it's tough, and the image stabilizer is not the best. So when you're trying to handhold for a bird, remember use a fast enough shutter speed because there's gonna be some motion blur. <laughs> I've compared this to some of my other lenses and this one is terrible. So a tripod is a must or a fast enough shutter speed that you're not gonna get a blurry image. All right, now let's talk about your apertures on your kit lens. This is the F18-55. Uh, when it's at 18 millimeters, it works at 3.5 uh, of an aperture. And when I zoom out to F55, it goes to F5 and then all the way down to F32. That sounds like a great range. The problem is when you use it at f3, 5, 4, 5, or 6, or even 7, you're going to get distortions around the corner of the image, making only the center the sharpest part. And if you go past f14, there's going to be refractions and different things on the lens that are not or in the image that are not going to make it look good. So the way around this is try to only use this from f8 to f11. That's your kit lens, your 18 to 55. Now I'm talking for stock photography because the quality has to be the best it can be. That limits a lot of your photo shoots. So remember, use a tripod. Use it in controlled environments where you have a lot of light. But if you keep it between F8 and F11, you should get the best quality photos that these lenses can produce. All right, and now one of the other issues I have with these cameras is that they're not weather sealed. Now, you know, you can't really expect that much from a little camera like this or from any other camera around the same price point, but you can see that they don't have any kind of gasket, anything here to keep, keep the dust or water outside of them. So you can't really shoot in the rain. I know a lot of photographers like to get good, good shots in the rain. You're gonna need an umbrella. The lens is not weather sealed, so water can go into the lens and damage the lens as well as the camera. So the way around this is they sell cheap uh, camera bags on Amazon that kind of zip tie here and you can block the water coming into the lens and to the hood and then it protects the camera. This is a cheap way to be able to use your camera in the rain as well. I'm really not trying to talk trash about the camera you have or the camera you want or something that somebody gave you. I just want you to understand the limitations that these things have, especially if you want to get into stock photography. Stock photography is a business and we need to treat it like a business. You want to make some money. I understand budgets are tight, but you have to invest a little bit to make some. Now, if you have one of these already, use it and follow these steps and try to make some more and more photos. Like I said, they rejected about half the images that I made with this camera. That means I need more and more. And it's okay to get images rejected. There's nothing wrong with somebody telling you they don't like your photos. That's an opinion. But the more photos you have, and yes, you can upload the same photo to different agencies. This is gonna give you more potential of generating some income. And the more photos you have, the more chances you're gonna have to upgrade in your camera. Now, like I said, use this camera where its, uh, its strengths are and not its limitations. Use it in bright light. Set up a studio in your house. Shoot objects that are not moving fast so you can focus on them manually. Use a tripod so you don't get blur and that you can actually zoom using light view to focus. Use, um, when you're using a lens like this for sports or anything, try to pre-focus where the action is going to be. That way you're gonna get a sharp image. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time trying to focus. Um, so there's ways around all this, but it's gonna take a little bit more work and a little bit more time. And like I said, upload as much as you can try to avoid these limitations and when you're ready you can upgrade now you don't have to buy new you can buy used and this part is not sponsored uh you know you guys know i bought this from mpv 
And there's also KEH, there's other websites out there. That, there's other websites out there and I check prices and they're about the same price if not less than Facebook Marketplace. But these come with a warranty. And yes, I know mine has to be bumped up. So okay. There we go. <laughs> um, they come with a warranty. Facebook doesn't give you that. So instead of buying from some shady guy on Facebook trying to sell you something that they found or stole, go right to the KEH or B, what is it, MPB. These are companies that you can sell, you can trade, or you can buy used gear through them. And one more thing with this lens is don't throw it away yet. I ordered an accessory that I think is gonna make me get the best photos available from this lens and this camera. Uh, so stay tuned for that, like and subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notified when that video comes out. I'm hoping I'll get that part here this weekend and then I can make the video for next week. Uh, so that's it, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.